Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to chapter 4 of the video series. In chapter 3, we learned about PN junction diodes. In this chapter, we are going to take a slightly different perspective as we are going to learn how a semiconductor can absorb sunlight. This video will be shorter and easier to understand as I will only cover the basics that is needed to learn solar cells. And before I start, I'd like to thank RS Grassroots Education for sponsoring this video series. You can also find written versions of my videos under the Design Spark website, links down in the description box. In these articles, I put down links to further reference materials for your further reading. These materials are the ones that I previously used before while I was learning about solar cells, so rest assured that they are good ones. So now, there's nothing else to do but to sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. I'm pretty sure you must have heard that sunlight is a wave. More specifically, we call them electromagnetic waves. To understand how a solar cell can absorb sunlight, we first have to learn about the behavior of electromagnetic waves. Now, electromagnetic waves are not just made out of sunlight. In fact, they are made up of many other waves that we can't see, like radio waves, microwaves, x-rays, and gamma rays. Different types of waves have different wavelengths and frequencies. Sunlight only consists of three types of waves. Infrared, visible sunlight, which we call light, and ultraviolet light. These three components make up what is called the solar spectrum. The solar spectrum usually shows the intensity of sunlight across wavelengths of about 250 nanometers to 2500 nanometers, which is about from the length of a molecule to the length of a needle point. So a solar cell under sunlight will be exposed to all these wavelengths of sunlight at different intensities. As you can see, visible sunlight, or the colors of the rainbow, has the most intensity, which means for a solar cell, most of the sunlight converted into electricity comes from visible sunlight. Throughout history, humans have always had different explanations for the physics of light. From the 1800s to the early 20th century, humans have always understood sunlight as electromagnetic waves. Those are the days of Michael Faraday and James Maxwell. It was not until the early 20th century that big names like Max Planck and Albert Einstein proposed that light is not just a wave, but rather small packets of waves called photons. Think of photons like a small piece of light particle that contains a specific wavelength of sunlight. Now, because sunlight doesn't only come in one wavelength, it is obvious to us that sunlight consists of many of these photons, each containing a unique wavelength of sunlight across a solar spectrum. But because for solar spectrum, each wavelength has a different intensity, the amount of particles or amount of photons is different for each wavelength. The visible light region has the most amount of intensity and hence it has the most photons. We know that each photon has a different wavelength, which means it has a different frequency. Wavelength and frequency are related via the equation c equals f lambda, where c is the speed of light. The wavelength or frequency of a photon can be related to the energy of the photon via the relation e equals h f over q or hc over q lambda, where h is the Planck's constant and q is the elementary charge. This means that for any photon, it has a unique energy, frequency, and wavelength, all related by these sets of equations. For example, these sets of photons have a wavelength of 1000 nanometers. 
equivalent to a frequency of 300 terahertz and energy of 1.24 electron volts. We can notice that the wavelength increases from left to the right of the graph, but the frequency increases from the right to the left due to the inverse relationship between wavelength and frequency. Energy and frequency have a proportional relationship and hence energy increases from the right to left. Now, we recall from chapter 2.1 that if an electron in a semiconductor absorbs more energy than its energy band gap, it will be excited from the valence band to the conduction band. For silicon, the energy band gap is 1.12 electron volts, which means if the electron absorbs more than 1.12 electron volts of energy, it will be excited. So where exactly does this energy come from? Pause this video and really think about it. Here is the answer. Now, we know for solar cells, this energy has to somehow come from light. And we know that light comes in photons. So the energy that is absorbed are actually photons. If we look back at the energy band diagram, when light shines into silicon, the electron absorbs a photon. If this photon has a higher energy than the energy band gap of silicon, say for example 1.3 electron volts, it will successfully excite the electron, leaving a hole behind. If the photon has less than 1.12 electron volts of energy, like 0.8 electron volts, the electron couldn't reach the conduction band, and hence no excitation. I'm going to put this on repeat a few more times. Take a moment to digest this sequence. If we refer back to the solar spectrum, we find that the energy band gap of silicon, which is 1.12 electron volts, sits right about here. So any photon which has a higher energy than 1.12 electron volts will be absorbed by the solar cell and excite an electron. So it makes sense that the band gap will actually determine how many photons can be successfully absorbed excite electrons and contribute to photocurrent. If the semiconductor has a low energy band gap, it will absorb more photons. If it has a high energy band gap, it will absorb less photons. So at the end of the day, does this mean if the solar cell has a lower energy band gap, it will perform better? Well, not quite true. This is a whole other chapter. I'll save this explanation for the next chapter. That's it guys for chapter 4. In this video, we learned what are photons and how it can be absorbed by semiconductors. We are now equipped with all the necessary materials that we need to finally explore solar cells. Coming up in the next chapter. Take care and goodbye.